These two shapes are obviously disconnected. They're separate objects. But in this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of strange mathematical objects that are going to really test various notions of what it means to be connected. Consider, for instance, the graph of the function sine of 1 over x. Because it's 1 over x, as x goes to 0, 1 over x becomes enormous, and as a result, sine starts oscillating faster and faster and faster and faster the closer you get to 0. In calculus, we might have called this an oscillatory discontinuity. Now I want to add to my graph this line. This is the line of all points on the y-axis between y values of minus 1 and 1. Note that the sine curve and the line are disjoint. For the sine curve, we were demanding that x is always positive so that 1 over x is not problematic. For the line, x is always equal to 0. So these are disjoint sets. So now my question is, what about the union of these two things? The sine curve union the line. What is this? Is this connected? Is this disconnected? This business of this infinite oscillation makes perhaps the answer to this question a little bit unclear. So to really answer it, I have to tell you precisely what do I mean by connected. And to do that, I want to start with a simpler example. Let's just consider, for instance, the interval 0, 1 union the interval 1, 2. The round bracket here denote that I am not including the endpoints. These are so-called open intervals. And well, it looks like this, a subset of the real line, but specifically where the value of 1 is not included. There's sort of like a hole at the value of 1. In contrast, I could consider, well, the same thing, the open interval 0, 1 union, the interval 1, 2, where now I put a square bracket, and that means that the 1 is included. And because the 1's included, there's no longer a hole there, and this is just the same thing as the interval 0 to 2. I can pictorially graph it in this way, and I want to note that in contrast to my top example, the 1 is included. So intuitively, the top 1 to me is disconnected. There's a hole in the middle of the value of 1 that separates it into two pieces. Well, the bottom 1 is intuitively connected. There is no such holes. And so I'm going to make a definition of this. I'm going to define a disconnected set is one where the scenario of the top example is possible. That is, you can make an A and a B. Both the A and the B are open sets. Open's very important here. It means it doesn't include those boundary points. So two open sets, they're disjoint. That means they don't overlap, but yet your set can be written as the union of them. If that's the case, then we'll call it disconnected, and otherwise we'll say it's connected. So, for instance, in the top example, I could color code it where the 0, 1 is my A and the 1, 2 is my B. So that's one notion of connected or disconnected. Let me give you a different notion. This time I'm going to go up a dimension and I'm going to consider a disk. I want to imagine I've got two points inside of the disk. And what I note with these two points is that I can draw some path in between them that lies entirely in terms of my set. This is the notion of path connected. So specifically, we will say a set is path connected if for any two endpoints, x0 and x1, you can find this continuous function f. The continuous function f can be thought of as going from the closed interval 0, 1 into your space x, such that f of 0 is the one endpoint and f of 1 is the other endpoint. And the key thing here is that this has to be continuous for it to be path connected. I can't, for example, go along for a while and then jump to some completely different spot and continue on over there. It has to be continuous. Let's test this now through the lens of the topologist sine curve, which is the fancy name for this object we've seen before that's the union of this vertical line and the graph of sine of 1 over x. Let's do connected first. I should observe that we can't directly say that it's connected because while I have written it as a disjoint union, the line is not open. This vertical line here is closed, it includes all of its boundary points. So even though I've written it here as a union, it does not mean that it's connected for that reason. Nevertheless, the line is where all the interesting stuff happens, so let's consider a point on that line. This is what we refer to in mathematics as a limit point, which means that if I look nearby, if I zoom in onto some little open set around that point, 
it's going to intersect the graph of the sine curve. Because the sine curve starts oscillating up and down faster and faster and faster, no matter how much I shrink that ball, every one of those balls is going to contain a point in the sine curve. And the fancy way of saying this is that our points along the line are all limit points, and we have this lovely theorem that says if you add limit points to a connected set, it's still connected. So this is indeed connected. And this just makes sense. There's no way that I can fit something sort of in between the line and the sine curve. The sine curve gets as close as you wish to the line. There's no way I could divide it neatly into these open sets. For path connected, I am asking if I take two points that are along this set, can I make a continuous path that goes between them? The line itself and the sine curve itself are, are both path connected themselves, so I've put up two generic points where one's on the line and one's on the sine curve, and then our question is, can I make this continuous path that joins up between these? I, that is, I'm really looking for this continuous function f that goes from a closed interval 0, 1 into this space of consideration, s union l. I'm going to leave for you in the comments the rigorous proof of this, but I'm going to give you sort of a rough sketch here. I'm trying to find a continuous function. Now, if I start at some point on the line, I could go up the line and down the line for a while, that's all totally fine. But at some point I have to leave the line and go on to the sine curve. At the point that I do that, I'm leaving with an x value of zero. Now, I am demanding that this function be continuous, and one of the big ideas of continuity is that you can make the values of the function as close together as you wish by looking as close as you need to in the domain. The oscillatory nature of this function again comes back to stump us. No matter how much I zoom in in the domain to the neighborhood of the point, because my function is oscillating infinitely, it's going to leave whatever ball you might choose to put around it. This function cannot be continuous. There cannot be a continuous path. And so this is not path connected. And this really illustrates that while there's actually a theorem that says every path connector space can be connected, the converse is not true and that weird examples like this illustrate that there's actually a difference between these notions. There's one other notion to do with connected I want to show you about. I'm going back to my disk and I'm going to put up my two points and they're going to be path connected. I'll draw a path between them. But suppose I drew another path between them. Well, in the case of the disk, I can imagine taking this path and sort of continuously deforming it until the two paths are actually the same thing. Or I could take this and deform it into any other path that I was so interested inside of my space. Well, I keep my endpoints fixed. In contrast, let's imagine that I didn't have this scenario, but I had an annulus. So an annulus has its hole cut out in the middle. The set doesn't have this interior bit. Well, now I can't do the same thing. There's no way that I can take the pink curve and continuously move it to the yellow curve while fixing the endpoints. I mean, I can try, I can sort of start to squeeze closer and closer around, but I can never get rid of the fact that some portion of this pink curve is always sort of stuck above the hole. There's a distinction between the annulus and a disk. And so I'm gonna call this distinction simply connected. So a simply connected set is one that's path connected, but in addition that any continuous path can be continuously deformed to any other while you're fixing the endpoints. Things get interesting up a dimension. Let's consider instead the two-dimensional sphere that is the boundary of a three-dimensional ball. There's still a hole of sorts, all the emptiness in the middle, but the two-sphere is still simply connected. For instance, a loop around the equator can be continuously shrunk up to the North Pole to form the constant loop that just stays at the North Pole for the entire interval. However, a hollow donut, also known as a torus, is not simply connected. A loop like this that I can move around in many different ways, but I can never shrink it to a point. Similarly, the red loop around the middle, I, I can neither shrink it to a point nor can I change it to the yellow loop without some sort of discontinuous cutting. Now I want to show you one of my favorite topological spaces, which is Alexander's horned sphere. We start with a sphere, and we add two horns to it. As the horns get close to each other, split each of them into two new smaller horns. As those get closer together still again, 
then we keep up this process of always splitting into new horns that are pinching closer and closer together but never actually touch. Now, Alexander's horn sphere is itself simply connected. There are no holes the way there is for a torus, and the fancy math speak way of saying it is that we have an embedding of the two sphere into R3. However, what is so cool about this example is that the outside of Alexander's horn sphere is not simply connected. To see this, let's represent Alexander's horn sphere with my arms. So I'm going to imagine I'm going to come together, but then I have to make these two little horns that are going to pinch, and then you can imagine I keep on pinching more and more and more. I can't grow my fingers into an Alexander horn sphere. Now what I want to illustrate is the, at least the big idea, although not the formal proof, of why the outside of Alexander's horn sphere is not simply connected. So let's imagine I've got some loop. So the loop is living outside of the sphere, and then here I've got my various pinch points. So to be simply connected, it should mean that I'd be able to pull out this loop and then shrink it down to a point like I did say on the surface of a sphere. But how can I do this? The only way that I can get out here is I have to sort of imagine that I could come through and get the belt out of all of those infinite pinching points. And this turns out via a compactness argument to not be possible. This issue of these infinite pinch points creates this problem that prevents the outside of Alexander's horn sphere from being simply connected, despite the fact that the Alexander's horn sphere itself is simply connected. And this example was useful in the development of the theory because it created a counterexample to proposed generalizations from two to three dimensions of theorems that did work in the two-dimensional case, but do not work in the three-dimensional case because of Alexander's horned sphere. Now, as a mathematics educator, I know that it takes more than just passively watching videos, even my own videos, to truly master mathematics. And that's why I'm so happy to share the sponsor of today's video, which is Brilliant.org. Brilliant has thousands of lessons in math, science, and computer science, and what I really appreciate about them is just how interactive they are. You get to play with the animations, and you get to try out all of the activities that help you self-assess your understanding. And if you get stuck, Brilliant helps you figure it out. Brilliant designs their lessons to break down the big ideas into digestible chunks. As a professor, I know that this kind of student-centered active learning is just really effective for your learning, and that's why I'm so proud to be sponsored by Brilliant. To try everything that Brilliant has for free for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org slash Trevor Bazzett or click the link down in the description. And the first 200 of you to click that link get an additional 20% off an annual premium subscription. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave them down in the comments below and we'll do some more math in the next video.